Hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming to you at the very least three times a week over the digital airwaves of YouTube. I'm here in my brand new studios, as you can see, thanks to our official studio sponsor, FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook, the official studio sponsor of the Stephen A. Smith Show. As always, wanted to take a moment to give love and respect to all of my supporters out there continuing to build my subscriber base. It's just growing astronomically. I can't thank y'all enough uh, for the love and support that you've given me. Keep it coming, and I'm going to keep on coming. Please make Make sure to continue to like and follow the Stephen A. Smith Show right here on YouTube. Just click the bell and get notified of all of our new content. While you are doing all of that, please don't forget to pick up a copy of my New York Times bestselling book, Straight Shooter, a memoir of second chances and first takes. You know, as I'm sitting here today, standing here today, I'm sorry, talking to you right now, I'm looking forward to the interview that I'm about to conduct. Actually, I've taped this interview before, just a few days ago but I wanted to make sure that you saw it today. Because when we think about the Thanksgiving holidays and we think about the spirit of giving, we also need to be thankful for so many things that we've received. When I see members of the hip hop community doing the kind of things that they're doing, yeah, it's one thing to point to the music. It's another thing entirely when they diversify their portfolios and they step out and they step beyond their comfort zone to engage in a kind of banter that really, really serves to contribute to various communities because of the language they speak, the people they speak to, what they draw out of the subjects that we're interested in hearing from and hearing about. All of these things are incredibly pivotal. And one of the things that you don't see enough of are people trying to do just that engaging in real, authentic conversation day after day after day. You're looking for that from a lot of areas in our world. You're certainly looking for that, for that from politics. You're looking from that from the, from the business culture, obviously from the media at large, because you've got people talking about the media's dead, fake news, and all of this other stuff. Everywhere you turn, divisiveness reigns. But when you see people from the streets elevate themselves to a level of success that most people never assumed they would ultimately achieve and then they extend beyond their comfort zones and expand their horizons and really engage in a different platform. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. Cameron and Mace, you know these fellas, you know these names, it is what it is. That's the name of their podcast. On five days a week, you can look for them they ain't hard to find. Rap artists, hip hop artists, very, very successful in that genre, but also successful in the world of podcasting where they're talking sports and entertainment and beyond. Articulating themselves in such a fashion that everybody has taken notice, especially yours truly. I had the pleasure of being a guest on their show a couple of months back, and now they've blessed me with their presence to show up on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Obviously, their candor is something that they're known for. Their knowledge about sports is something that surprised a lot of people. Their insight into the hip hop culture, how that's intertwined with the world of sports, all of those things are things that have gravitated or served to have gravitated an abundance of people towards not just their podcast, but podcasts all over the place. It's the kind of thing that you look for. It's the kind of thing that you want to see. And me personally, as a black man, who's practically an elder statesman in this day and age. I'm 56 years old, after all. It's cats like this I love seeing. But you know what the most special part about it all? Just like I love them, they love me back. Because that's what brotherhood is all about. That's what coming together is all about. It can never happen without a conversation. That's what makes the world go round. And we're about to have one. I'm about to show you one. My conversation with Cameron and Mace, or shall I say Mace and Cameron, since Mace is the closest one to me. That's up next, right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Can't wait for it.
Score this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. And who wouldn't want a little something extra to celebrate if the team you're rooting for is victorious, you know? And even though we're well into the season, it's not too late to get started. In fact, there's no better time to get in on the action than now. We've seen the early season trends. We know what we're dealing with, and hopefully our bets follow suit. And this app is so easy to use. My friends love FanDuel. They bet spreads, props, totals, all the action they want on the game, and they're able to do so through FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash SAS and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.com. Org slash chat in Connecticut, 1 800 9 with it in Indiana, 1 800 522 4700, or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1 877 770 STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, visit 1 800 gambler.net in West Virginia, or call 1 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY in New York. Joining me on the show right now are two Harlem hip-hop legends who now host their own popular sports and music podcast called It Is What It Is. Please welcome my brothers to the show, Mace and Cameron. What's up, fellas? What's going on? How y'all doing? CVA, what's up, CVA? What's good, baby? How are you? I, I, I'm je- I, tell you, I tell you how I am. I'm jealous as hell. Y'all out there in Vegas, the weather look nice. You ain't paying no state <laughs> income taxes. I'm jealous as hell. Talk to us. First of all, what are y'all doing out in Vegas? What's going on? But before we get to what, what got it while we're in Vegas, I just want to tell you thank you for getting on our show early before anybody else even got on our show. And you're part of the reason that we're in Vegas right now. So right. I just want to tell you thank you because you didn't have to take a chance coming on our show and you really was one of the first people to ever do that. So thank you so much for doing that. We really man, appreciate man, that. Man, y'all brothers have made me so proud. I love your podcast. I love the work that you're doing. Mace, um, talk to me about, first of all, before we even get into a whole bunch of sports topics, because I know I see some of the takes y'all got. Y'all just wild. Y'all just wild <laughs> as hell. But, but when, 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 when y'all started this podcast, Mace, what was the thought behind it? What inspired it? How did it come about? Um, actually, Cam Cam has shot a show or two of uh, many shows, and they were going really, really well. And he invited me on there. And when he invited me on there after the, after just one show, I was like, "Yo, Cam, you really got something right here." Wow. And then I was talking to him. I said, "Yo, what if, what if we do it together?" And from there. He, you know, killer, he started bringing up the money amount. He said, I put this much in. <laughs> I told him my percentage I wanted. He said, mate, listen, I already put this amount of money in. You're going to have to put this amount of money in. And then I had to match him. And, and you know, my brother was gracious enough to bring me in. And, you know, thanks to Cam for, for believing in me and believing that we could take it to another level. We thought that we could do anything together when me and Cam get together is always a special moment. Pause. Yeah, and, but, and I don't know what he's saying, man. I'm happy he asked me to do it because we haven't been speaking for years and to partner up on something that was, you know, we didn't know where this show was going to go. We we said we're going to keep going until we get there, but to have my brother back just being my friend and us not speaking so long and then being successful that quick. Uh, I'm glad he asked me, man, because right? it, it was a hit from the beginning. You know, I want to know, before I get into some questions, I want to know, Cam, what did you think was going to make this podcast successful? What was it about you and Mace that made you say, yo, we're going to do it, we're going to be a hit, we're going to make this happen? Well, what happened was this. When I first thought of the idea, so many people asked me to do podcasts to be on their podcast, and I'm like, if I got to talk to people for a living, I would hate it. So I was like, I talk shit about sports all the time. Right. And I said, I want a professional setting, but a barbershop uh, dialogue. 
So we got the barber. So when I first did the show, I said, I'm going to get suited up. I'm going to get a professional setting. And I'm going to talk to people like we talk in the barbershop or we talk on the block or just in the street in general. And when Mace wanted to come, when I asked Mace to be a guest, and, you know, we, we've been cool for about a year. Or get, like I said, we haven't spoke 15, 16 years. And at that point, when I asked him to be a guest, uh, he, and he said, yeah, and he got on the show. You know, I'm learning his personality again. But after the first show, I said, oh, this is the same person. That's, <laughs> this is the same guy. <laughs> and I said, I said, oh, oh, I thought he changed. Right. He ain't changed. This, this is the same dude that I, that I speak to 15 years ago. So I said, yo, it's a no-brainer, because I'm like, you know, you get the, the reason why I think this show is so dope for Mace is because you gotta realize when, when Mace was at a height, the height of his music career, right. um, he left. And even when he was at the height, it wasn't an internet. So when you you only got to see an interview with Mace that may have been three minutes, or videos just three minutes, or a magazine article where you get a quote. Mace didn't really get a chance to get his personality across unless it was a video or three or four minute, five minute interview. You really get to see the personality come from Mace. So there's so many people like, yo, now nah, I ain't no Mace was that funny. Now nah, I ain't no Mace got jokes. I didn't know Mace is that. I, you know, because Mace, Mace, one thing about Mace, if, if he ain't feeling it, he'll leave. <laughs> I, I got to call it. If his phone go to voicemail, I, I got to panic. And I'm like, yo, did he skip down? I, I, one thing about okay. Mason, if he don't like what's going on, he'll cut his phone off and you'll see him in six, seven years. Damn. So every time his phone go to voicemail, I panic. Yeah, Ma- Ma- he's trying to say I'm Ben Simmons. I did, that, 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 Mace, that's where I was going. But Mace, I don't know if Cam, Mace, I don't know if Cam ever told you this. The first time Cam and I really hit it off when we was talking, I saw that video he put out. He was pissed off about Ben Simmons. Look, he, he did a video. I'm, I'm really getting sick and tired of this. I'm watching cats going up and down the court. This brother right here, he just out. He ain't doing nothing. I mean, Cam was losing it. I'm asking yeah. you, Mace. Yeah, I know your personality is different, but do you? get like that do you find yourself as you talk in sports music what are you most passionate about between the two the two genres and more importantly how in do you go about some of these whether it's artists or athletes themselves how do you really really feel about these folks um i actually feel like even on the show that's where we compliment each other because Cam got a lot of these relationships, but he's kind of biased on the truth. <laughs> so my so my part is to come in and tell the honest to God truth about everything. Mm. So that's what I'm really passionate about, people knowing the truth unbiasedly about what's going on in sports. Cause I think a lot of people get a break. Until you hit your rent or a killer hit his rent, a lot of people skate by with a lot of subpar, you know, performances. I got to agree with him because I'll say, I ain't trying to mess my floor seats up with my relationships. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't trying to mess the floor seats up? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I got some friends in the NBA and I can see floor seats and make sure that I'm not being cool see, with nobody. And, 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 and that's and, and that's real, and that, excuse, that's real shit right there because I'm going to be honest with you, we, yeah, I cuss a little bit, I ain't on ESPN, I'm on YouTube. The point that I'm trying to make to y'all is this, you absolutely right because some of these cats will turn to get you. They get you some tickets and you utter a negative syllable about them. They pissed off at you, they want to take the tickets back, they want to talk to you, Ken. I know it's like, I, I definitely know it's like that. But let me ask y'all this, as you've been doing this, the kind of reception, Mace, that y'all have been receiving has been what exactly? I'm talking about from the sports world. Um, it's, it's been really amazing and sometimes far, partially overwhelming because you're getting a lot of people that's given us fanfare that we looked up to all of our lives, you know, from a sports aspect. And then when you see those guys, like, people saying stuff like, man, Mason can't rob me of 20 years of this. I could have had this 20 years ago. And and stuff like that is really is really um humbling to think people think of us in that space. Let, let me let me give you a scenario real quick, and I won't be long winded okay. about it. Right. We're just saying people in the sports world. I'll give you a perfect example. Please. Somebody said from the Charlotte Hornets that Paul George was the goat of basketball. Period. <laughs> so I had to think like this kid is out his rabbit ass mind, saying that Paul George is the goat ever. The goat. The goat. I'm talking about over Michael Jordan, over LeBron James, over Kobe Bryant. 
over Isaiah Thomas over Magic John. Paul George is the GOAT. I went crazy and said, I don't know what this kid is smoking. I don't know where he's been, but he's out of his damn mind saying Paul George is the GOAT. Fast forward three weeks later, Paul George sees Mason Summer League and says, Why well, can't be said, why well, can't be the GOAT? Why I can't, what's going on? Mason tell Kim why I can't be the GOAT. So yeah, Mason, they surrounded me. I had to call Kim. I said, Yeah, damn. Kim. Boy, Jordan them got me surrounded right now. <laughs> Sam, did, why you did, 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 you, did you tell him because we love you? You we know that you all were you a baller, but you haven't even played in a championship series yet. Did you tell him that? Nah, I ain't <laughs> I ain't I'm just saying. I mean, if we sitting there talking for the purposes yeah, of talking, I love yeah. Paul George. I was on, I was on, I was on podcast. I was on podcast. P. I know what I, I understand, but damn, I'm like, wait a minute, brother, you ain't playing the NBA Finals, let alone win one. You can't be the goat yet. I'm sorry. Yeah, it can't be the goat no, yet. Cameron, let me, Cameron, let me ask you this question: What's more difficult to cover in terms of the sensitivity? The sensitivity element. Is it covering mm-hmm. professional sports? Is it covering the music industry? Commenting about it. The question. Well, to me, to me, it's we come from music, so it's kind of it's hard to. It's, I'm, I'm trying to think about how to answer this question correctly. Okay. We're gonna tell the truth no matter what. Yeah. It's gonna you're gonna tell the truth, and sometimes I think that artists talking about music artists are more sensitive to athletes. Because they'll say something that's, oh, they're talking about me or it's beef. So where athletes are going to get talked about, whether it's us or anybody else. Look, I remember, we're old enough to remember when ESPN had one champion. Now yeah. ESPN is, is, is sports all day long, all night long, 24 hours a day. Right. Sports going to come on from 11 p.m. to 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. Whenever, mm-hmm. whenever the next show comes on. So it's constant sports. So to answer the question for me, not for me, I would say music because people take it, which you say, too seriously. Mm-hmm. So with sport, whether it's us or not, somebody's going to talk about what's going on. What about you, yeah. Mace? What about you, Mace? And for me, and for me, I think it's sports because just like you, you know, I sometimes you're a savant at what you do, and you and you know exactly what you're talking about. And people try to discredit your knowledge because you you didn't make it to this level or that right. level. And they tend to think, well, that can't be true. And how would he know? But some of the best coaches have never played. They never played. Mm. So we, we, as we sit here today looking at y'all and what y'all have been able to accomplish, I'm looking at the industry itself in the world of sports and beyond, particularly with music. And I think this day and age calls for a level of truth. Not to say that it wasn't there in the past, but the hell with all of the pleasantries. You're not trying to be disrespectful. Yeah. You're not trying to be evil. But one of the things that anno- annoys me to no end is when a bunch of people come on TV with me and we got the couch, everything with all of the laudables. When I bring up LeBron James, I literally made a ticker on first take on ESPN going like this. Great father, great husband, entrepreneur, businessman, actor. <laughs> I had to say all of this. I said, because damn, I can't sit up here and say he's the second greatest player of all time without people feeling like it's insulting. It gets annoying to me. Does this excite y'all or have y'all found yourselves annoyed by having to couch some things or having to deal with, if you didn't couch something, having to deal with the fallout when all you was doing was talking about sports or music and breaking stuff down through your lens? Mace, I'll start with you on that question. Yeah, to me, to me, sports is like art. Everybody got an opinion and everybody have a different lens in which they view things from. Because to me, I wouldn't have them too, but, you know, that's my, that's my opinion, you know. To answer your question, Stephen, I, <laughs> yeah. I get them rich Paul calls too. Yo, calm down on niggas, man. <laughs> calm down, bro. I, I get, <laughs> All the time. Yeah, 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 so. I know what you're talking about. It's not the sport. That's my guy. Um, in general, look, to me, it's, it's fresh for me and it's new. And when you got somebody like Patrick Beverly coming back and saying something, or Draymond Green saying something about what we said, to me, it's like, as long as you're up knowing where the culture's at and, and paying attention, whether you're mad about it or indifferent, as long as you're watching, like, for instance, we'll give you a situation with Patrick Beverly. Patrick, Patrick Beverly, mm-hmm. um, he said he doesn't have sex before games because it takes away. And and I told her, and basically I had it taken. I said, yo, Pat, 
Go have sex, man. You have it in a single, single. It's all good. You <laughs> might as well go have sex with school. Right, right. <laughs> so he, he got mad and he was like, yo, Cam, I, I liked you better in the movie. And, that, and when you was playing Rico in the movie, and I'm like, yo, you know that I was acting, right? That wasn't, I don't, I'm not the nigga from the movie, bro. Right. My name is Cam. So he went back on his podcast, said some good things about it, back and forth. But just knowing that I'm the culture, and not to take that for effect too, that some of these players, man, came up listening to our music, right. or watching movies, and so on and so forth. So now when they see us talk about sports, they like, hold up, I like him my whole life. I bought all his albums. Now he's critiquing yeah. my game, it's and it's crazy. like, it's crazy. So I'll be yeah. like, sometimes I get a little conscious, but I got a job to do at the same time. You know, I want to transition a couple of subjects because I got I can't I've been aching to ask y'all about this stuff, right? Because you're brought up, you know, what you talk to with, with Pat Beverly and whatever. Draymond Green, he's making news, uh, suspended for five games after that headlock he threw on Rudy Gobert. I thought I, I first of all, it wasn't a headlock; it was a chokehold. Let's call it what it is, okay? <laughs> it's a chokehold, all right? Now suspended for five games. Fair or not, Cameron? Was that fair or foul? The five game suspension. I think. See, there's another relationship. Jay, my Now, but seriously, to be honest with you, I think it was kind of, it was definitely a low game suspension. I think he should be happy with the five games. I think if this was David Stern, it'd be 45 games. Yeah. I think minimum, would they, if there was yeah, a different commission, I think Adam Silver's more of a players commissioner than David Stern was. Mm -hmm. So he talks to players. He, he is more opinionated on how they feel. And I think this was a very, very low-end um, suspension. I remember Carmelo Anthony punching somebody in the face of Madison Square Garden yeah. and getting about 35, 40 games or something like that. And I think this well, was way... Also remember, that was one of those games where Nate Robinson got in a fight. You know, right. it, it, it didn't quite end the same way it ended with him against Jake Paul. You know, you know right. what I'm saying? I mean, it's a different ending. Exactly. But go ahead, but go ahead. Exactly, no, but I was just saying that I just think to me, it's kind of low. If I if I had a judge, it, and I would say anywhere from eight to ten games, and no disrespect, Draymond, but I'm just saying, you know, Carmel, Carmelo hit on a flash punch, got 35, 40 games. I don't remember the exact amount of games. Right. I remember it was a long. Neither do I. It was a long. It was lengthy. Uh, though. It was lengthy. Though. I don't remember that amount of games. It was lengthy. Yeah. It was a lengthy. This choco was about uh, a 17 second thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, he was trying to make him go to sleep. Yeah, he yeah. Put him in sleep. He to sleep. Him in sleep. Yeah. What you so, think, of, Mace? What did you think about Pat Bev saying Cat didn't do a damn thing? Call Anthony Towns. I mean, he was supposed to do something. What did you think about that? Yeah, he was definitely supposed to get active. Pat Bev was right about that. He was about to and get that's active. what made the low game suspension really crazy because that fight, that fight could have spiraled into something crazy because so many people got involved. And when you think about how far Draymond ran to get in the fight, he right. wasn't even initially in the fight. <laughs> he comes from the blind side choking niggas. You so so y'all been y'all been friends y'all been friends for years since high school, if I remember correctly. What yeah. if somebody did that to one of y'all? What, 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 what would oh, the other oh, do? Yeah. If somebody put y'all, if somebody snatched y'all up the way Draymond snapped, snatched up Rudy Gobert, what would the, what would one of y'all do? Listen, Cam. Listen, me and Cam is like that. So. Back in the days, a guy named Dame Dash, you might know the name. Yes, I do. Dame Dash said he was going to beat me up. Cam grabbed the baseball bat and said, oh, Dame, you can't do that, Dame. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. He got, a, he got your back. He got your back. Go ahead, man. Listen, we love Dame. No, we Dame, love Dame. That, that was a hard decision. He made me make it himself because we all were cool. All of us was cool. But see, the thing about Dame, Dame is almost – He's one step lower than a professional boxer. A lot of people don't know he fought Golden Gloves right. and yeah. everything else. So I'm like, that's not a fair fight for me. <laughs> <laughs> anybody, when you get, anybody, let me tell you this, Stephen A. If you get into an argument with somebody and their first reaction is, so you want to box? Oh. Not fight. Not a fight. That's a problem. Not get it on. No, let's, do you want to box? That means they have a little knowledge about They got boxing. a little knowledge. They got yeah, a little but knowledge. That, yeah. But they asked to be totally... Yeah, that's my big bro. Yeah, that's both our big bro. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing but love for Dame this way. Ain't nothing but love for Dame yeah. this way. Let me ask y'all this question. Um, 
I heard that, you know, I, I got on that, I, I got on that lady, the wife of Joe Smith, a, a couple of weeks ago because she made news. Diamond out, uh, uh, former NBA player Joe Smith, former number one overall pick Joe Smith. <laughs> Diamond him out, talking about, we, everybody know we got money issues and all of this other stuff. Oh, oh I thought that was trifling. Oh, I thought that was trifling as hell on her part. Having said all of that, I heard that, that y'all talked with her <laughs> and, and Mace that you asked her to do something. You care to enlighten my audience about what you asked this woman to do? <laughs> well, actually, Stephen A., we, we thought we were flying in the, um, the body rub base, but she came out of nowhere and said she wanted to be the one to give Cam the massage. So that was crazy. And then we was talking about it, and she, she was having a conversation. I asked her would she a ride or die. She said she would ride, but she wouldn't die. So I said, okay, we got a new terminology now. Right. You're a ride. What you want to say, killer? No, <laughs> what, what, what I say about this, about, about the situation, Mace got her to give me a massage. Uh, a couple so you got the massage the already? So you got the massage already? Yeah, it's, it's a tournament show. Oh, show. Damn. On the show. Okay. She did, it live, she did it live on the show. Oh, my Lord. So she did, she gave you the massage? Yeah. Well, then, you know, you, you know what my next question is, right? What, 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 was it good? Was it good? <laughs> <laughs> was it good? I just asked. She got paid. She got. She got, got paid. She got paid. Now, now, now far be it for me because you know I ain't trying to be Dr. Ruth like Sports Illustrated. I'm talking about me being Dr. Ruth or something like. That. I ain't trying to do all of that. But damn, I feel somebody got to look out for the fellas. We've been op our society has been oprified. It's not been enough men out there looking out for men. We have to. We've sub we've been subjected to Oprah. She's, I, I mean, everything is everything is a dude's fault these days. Do y'all not have a problem with the wife be, filming the man while you arguing with him? And, well, and well, let, me tell you, let me tell you how this all played out. This is what originally happened, how, she, how this all came about. Our, our moderator on the show, Treasure Wilson, y'all know as a yes. sad baby. Me and Mace decided to give her her own show. It's called Check Out the Sat. It comes on Fridays at 3 p.m on our YouTube channel, um, come and talk to me. So me and Mace would decide to give her an opportunity to do her own show. She wanted uh, Joe Smith's wife to be on the show. Mm -hmm. So when she was coming on the show, she told that baby, Treasure Wilson, I'm not going to do your show if Kim and Mace is not there. We're not on that show. Yeah. We're, that's totally her show by herself. Right. She said, well, I won't do your show unless you get my mates is there to do it. Wow. So when I, I said, fine, no problem. Now, mind you, this was my day off. I wasn't even supposed to be at work this day. So I came to Sack show so she could do the interview. Make that prior obligation. She could make it. When I came, when she got on the air, a cleavage was out. It was oiled up. And she, she knew how she was coming on the screen. So I said, uh, you have a nice cleavage because it seemed like it wanted to be a cleavage one. Damn right. My thing was my thing is this Stephen A with me. A lot of girls, you know, I got a lot of female friends. And what girls do, they do things and not me particularly to drive us guys crazy to say, I'm gonna put on these daisy dukes and oil up my, and, and I'm gonna oil up yes. my legs. Yes. I'm gonna put oil up my body. Damn. And then when somebody comes up, oh, you got nice size. What you looking at me for? You knew what you was doing before you left the house. That's right. You just do this. You brought that armor off for a reason. You brought that armor off for a reason. Go ahead. Exactly. Yes. So, more, and so here's the thing before I, I guess I won't be long with it. I wasn't supposed to be there. I came so that so baby could get the ratings on her show. And then when I arrived, your cleavage is showing. Secondly, we asked, what have you been doing? Oh, I have a massage company called the Body Rub Babes. Oh, do they travel? Yeah, we travel. So when they found out that they travel, he tried to book one of the body rub babes for me, and it was hard. Wow. Right. So that's what happened. But to be clear and to, and to add on what you just said, listen, they take these bites from these from our from our um from our show and put out what they want to put out. We was on Joe Smith's side hundred percent. He's yeah. a number one pick. The fact that he doesn't have any money right now just serves us terribly. And we were trying to figure out a way that where the NBA could take care of these players that yeah. put so much into the game. You know, Joe Smith said he made $61 million his entire career, but after paying taxes, lawyers, agents, et cetera, 
that dwindled down to 18 million. And we talked about that on the show as well. And we're saying that that was definitely not a good look. And we was hoping that some of Joe Smith's former NBA friends right. that were still cool with him held a look out for him, man, because we, we thought that wasn't cool at all. So we don't want it wasn't cool at all. It, it wasn't cool at all. And, and by the way, we need to say it ain't cool for women to be talking about their spouses. Publicly. Yeah, and, uh, privately, and that's what, privately, and that's that's what, what I that tried makes. to get her to understand. I tried to get her to understand that you said you was married to this guy. You said you were there for better or for worse. That's right. But it seemed like all the ors she wasn't there for. She Dude. wasn't there for the or worse or die. Only the so better. Said, you, you said Only you were the ride or die, but you didn't die, though. That's right. Well, she, you, you know, fi figuratively her. speaking, she is going to die because if she lose, Joe, who going to want her? Who going to want her? Well, you know how you roll. I would have yeah. won her. I'd have divorced her ass on the spot. I ain't gonna lie to you right now. She'd been out. She'd have been let out. Me ask, let me ask you a question. Yeah, sure. Tonight, real, real quick, because I want you to finish the same, but just say we're on this topic. What, and I know you wouldn't want either one, either female. We have that 100% down back. Right. Who's worse right now, her situation or Jada Pickett Smith? I personally think, wow, that's a damn good question, Ken. I got to think about that for a second. That's a damn good question. <laughs> Who's worse? And then I got one. Joe after Smith's that. wife or, 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 or Will Smith's wife, Jada Pickett Smith. I'm gonna say Jada. You know why? Yeah. Because Joe Smith's wife is just betraying all of her vows, just throwing him under the bus. Yeah. Jada has emasculated Will. There's a difference. Now, I'm not saying that Joe Smith's wife didn't do that either, but in the same breath, you on hard times, you just kicking the brother while he's down. That's really making you look bad. In Jada Pinkett Smith's case, not only is she making herself look bad, she making him look even worse. And this brother was so... I'm, she, look, we all know why he slapped Chris Rock. We yep. all know that. We, we all know why. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You, when you emasculating this man, but so much and all of that stuff, then you looking at him. She gave him that look like, "What the hell are you gonna do? You just gonna stand there and let him joke around about me like that?" Right. That's why he got up there like that. Now he wouldn't. Have, he wouldn't have slapped you. He wouldn't have slapped either one of y'all. He wouldn't have slapped. He wouldn't have slapped the the rock. He wouldn't have slapped. <laughs> hell, he wouldn't have slapped Snoop Dogg. He did that right. because it was Chris Rock. But that's that's where I'm at with it. Jada Pinkett Smith is much worse. What was you gonna ask me, Mace? Yeah, I was gonna ask you. That was a good one. That was the semifinal. I'm sick on the championship. All right. Who's worse, loss of Pippen or Jada? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'm gonna still say it's Jada Pinkett Smith. Let me tell you why. Because yes, if Larsa was with MJ, that would be different. She yeah. with the sun. Now, it's not great. It's not a good look. But that don't have anything to do with Michael Jordan other than that's his son. Okay? And, you know, that's all that is. It's kind of it's not kind of embarrassing situation for Scottie Pippen, and I get all of that. But that's not MJ directly. In Jada's case, everything she has done has, 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 has served to smear the name of Will Smith. And I think it's more direct impact. And that's why I would say um, Jada Pinkett Smith is still worse than Larsa in that regard. Before I let y'all get on out of here, my last question to y'all, because I want, I want everybody to know that as you move forward, as you march forward, first of all, you're still musicians. You could go out there and make music and make money off of making music anytime y'all want to, as gifted as y'all are. I want to let right. the audience know, do you plan on doing any of this, or are you married to this podcast right here and continuing to blow it up for years and years to come? I'll start with you, Cameron. Well, the, the, first, the first priority is definitely the podcast. Uh, we have some great relationships. Shout out to Underdog Fantasy and I have our other partners. So I, we have some priorities here. But the question is, uh, is not really for me. The question is for this guy. He takes me to the studio. We do 92 songs. And then he'd be like, I'll let you know when we put it out. And I, I have no date on it. But, I, I, yo, this, the, the kid, this guy is still probably one of the best rappers uh, at right now. I would put him top eight, nine rappers. He'll say number one. He said he doesn't rap like that because there's no competition. <laughs> but uh, if it's up to me, we could go on tour tomorrow. It's, it's Mace, it, that's a question for Mace. Go ahead, Mace. He put me on the spot. Yes, yeah, I am. Yeah, we're putting out music. 
You putting out music? Yeah, we're definitely putting How out music. How soon? How got, soon? We got to put out something, right? I think probably Black Friday. Okay. No, no, look, Stephen, they remember me saying this. Black Friday. <laughs> Look, man. We got at least drop a record. Look, we got we got something special we got to drop. I got to get ready to get on out of here, man. But I want to let y'all know I'm proud of y'all, man. I was happy to come on the podcast. I love what y'all doing. I love that rawness that y'all can bring to the table. It's a lot of cats trying to do it, but y'all actually are doing it. So keep up the great work. Keep working hard. Stay on your grind. Make it happen like you've been doing all your life, man. Both of y'all. Much love and appreciation to you. And thank you real quick for doing what you're doing as far as the coach is concerned, because people like you, they make us think that we could do what we're doing now and mm-hmm. dress on the new studio and everything else you got going on. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you so much, Stephen A. We'll be up there to use that studio. Damn right. Damn right. I'm going to make sure I got another couch. It's going to be a new couch. It's a whole bit. We're going to be set up. Ain't no doubt about it. Appreciate y'all, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Roger. All right. My thanks to Mason Cameron. You can catch their podcast. It is what it is. Every weekday, back with more in a minute. It is what it is. That's what Cameron and Mace just finished telling you. What an honor and privilege it is to talk to those two young brothers and to see what they're doing wishing and hoping that they continue to shine the way that they've been shining. And by the way, they're not the only ones I'm rooting for. There's a whole bunch of brothers and sisters out there, white, black, Latino, and beyond, doing very, very special things, serving to enlighten us all. That's what it's all about, y'all. It's what it's all about. Yeah, we're all doing it. But this notion that there's only room for a few, that there's not room, there's not but so much room, people like these guys debunk that all the time. That's why I wanted them to show up on the Stephen A. Smith show. That's why I'm happy they were here. And that's why I so thoroughly enjoyed that conversation. I hope you did too. I hope you learned something from it and I hope you're able to take away from it what they want you to take away from it. Hard work, dedication, perseverance, and no limitations. It's what it's all about, especially in the year 2023 and beyond. You wanna make things happen? Well, damn it, go ahead and make things happen. That's really what it comes down to. Cameron, Mace, love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much for being